G'day everyone, welcome to the show. We're back working on the 34 Ford Coupe Ute and last time we made these panels up here. Now when I started making them I was hoping they would be a perfect production run and I'd wind up with two really nice rear corners but the further I got into them the more I realised that I was going to have to change things to get them to work right. So I still haven't built the proper ones, I'll share that with you when I do it but I've changed my mind on how I'm going to make it. And part of that is because of the success I had with the two door posts. So the plan now is, instead of putting this double step on here, which is very hard to bend and keep looking nice, I'm going to build the pillar like I did the door post and then go back to the original idea that Ford used back in 1934 of just putting the one fold on there curving it and then I'll put it on here and I'll weld it to this panel. I'm thinking about running a dummy run of nails in there just to make it look like the original. So what I did was I modified the hammer form that we'd already made for making the back corners and I took the piece off it for where the bead line goes so that I could actually use this as the guide in the pull max. And I've done this test run here but I don't like the half inch step that it's got in here. And like I was talking about with these panels here, I just want to give it a little bit more area for a tailgate seal to work on and less chance of stuff sort of working their way out of the back of the car and falling out on the road. So like this one's got a half inch recess, I want the same one here. Now to achieve that, I'm going to rework the pull max tools. Now these are the two pull max tools that I made for doing the door posts and I've already cut another quarter of an inch out of this one here and I've just got to do the same on the other post. So what I'll do is I'll trim this one down in here and then we'll get them to match back up so they work like that and then the same thing but we'll start with a much wider opening and as we work the piece of metal down I'll bring that back in until we get this back to this edge here and that should give us a much deeper step in here and be able to achieve what I want. I'm just going to take this little quarter of an inch out of here and this is the upper tool so that will allow the lower tool to fit into it and we'll be able to get our three quarter of an inch step hopefully but once again this is a bit experimental because it's a lot of metal to be dragging around that corner and it's 14 gauge 1.6 millimeter material so it's a bit stiff and a bit rugged to work but hopefully it's all going to work for us. quite hot. I've just got to touch this up in here a little bit and grind that out a bit and just take these sharp edges off it and it should be nearly ready to test. So we've got our full three quarter of an inch step in it now. So that's tidied all of that up so that should be pretty good ready to go. The other thing I've done is I've included a bit of a radius this way. I'll just give that a bit more of a sweep around there but at the end of it it was tending to run straight so we've got the top section, it's got to curl in a bit more here and I wasn't able to keep it running exactly true before so it straightened itself out and I'm hoping with a bigger radius on here I can actually get to curl that around a bit more at the top. Some of the problems you'll encounter with this sort of thing is now that I've reduced all this area at the top here to be able to curl the workpiece around is that we could wind up with a series of just little dents side by side along the edge of it but hopefully we've got to work this one quite a few times at the end of it we'll wind up with a nice smooth line instead of a whole heap of little spots 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 on it so we'll put in the pull max and give it a try.
this bottom bolt here is just catching on the tool post as it comes past it. So what I'll do is I'll take it out and just drill it a bit more offset and we'll be able to continue on with it. It's a bit of a balancing act because I don't have much room this side either. So we'll move him out just a little bit and uh, it should all be good. Another go.
Well, that was a bit of a tough run. I've just got it to fold down nice and neat there now. So I've got this tight corner in here, but because the metal was flared out on an angle, I've had to stand it up. So I had to work pretty hard on that one. So it's worn me out a bit, but we'll just keep cranking her up and it looks like it's gonna work all right. So we'll have enough material on this fold here for the outside skin to come up and sit into it. We've just got to bring it down a little bit more. Whew. Well that, I would say, will be a usable panel. So this will form the post that fits inside the tailgate. The tailgate will swing up into this opening. We've got this nice wide three quarter of an inch wide edge on here that we could fit a seal in there if we want to later on. But even if I don't, it's got enough overlap that small things won't rattle out of the back of the car. So I'm very happy with that, it actually worked. I was a little bit tongue in cheek whether it was actually gonna function or whether it was gonna tear the piece of metal because once again, it's a big ask of a piece of 14 gauge to go that far. Well, it's Sunday morning and I'm back in the back of the shed working away on the 34 Ford Coupe Ute. And this is the piece we were making before on the Pull Max. So this is the piece that the tailgate closes into. So this is the right hand one that I've done a bit more work on and got it prepped and fitting in place. And I've made a bit of inner structure to go in behind it. Now, I've really complicated my life by wanting to put the wood back in there. Now originally, I've said before, these were a timber frame car. So they had wooden pillars in them, wooden boards in them. And this is a left, so that one would have gone over on the other side like that. But they have this bit of metal on the edge here as a protector strip for things in the back of the car. And then this face in here was actually wooden. And then our back corner was nailed through the edge here. Now I'm thinking about putting some dummy nails in this one and actually just drilling a sequence of little holes driving the nails in and putting a spot of weld on the back of them so when it's finished it looks more like the original. Now I've got the tailgate recess, that's not original, I never had that and I will be lining it with a wooden post. So I'll take that apart in a minute and show you where I'm going, going with that. And our back corner that we did before and this one I've trimmed the second lip off there to make it work a bit better but this is where we're going with it. The big problem I've got is I've changed the car. Now I've made my quarter panels a little bit longer and I've made the back of the car a little bit wider than what Ford did it. And this panel here matches the original Ford one. So I'm going to make a new one that'll come out to the edge of my structure here and it'll taper in a little bit more at the bottom, but it'll give us that nice fullness that a 34 Ford's famous for. So on the inside, we have got this panel I've made in here. Now it's only halfway there. I'll take this piece off. So this one's got another job to do yet. I've actually got to add a lip on this outside edge, which will match the outer skin 
and that'll pick up on that rolled edge that we made before on there. So this panel's actually going to have to slide on from the end, hook around there, and then we can weld it and put the nails in it to make it look like the original part. Now this little panel in here is going to be quite tricky because it's got to have a curve in it that goes this way to match the curve of our panel this way, but it's also got a curve to match the side of the car. So it'll be a little bit of work with the stretcher I would say to do most of that and this edge in here will be so small I should be able to bend that by hand but I've got to get it to line up and then it'll finally be trimmed in place. But to get this accurate I've got to get the left hand side up to this same stage so I can get a straight edge across the back of the car because looking across the car the car is flat there is no fullness to it. So we need these two panels when they finally go on the car to actually be flat all the way across. That's where it's going to get tricky, getting this outside lip to actually work. So this is the recess I'm making for the wood to go in it. And it'll be an inch thick, 25 millimeter piece of wood in there eventually, but this is a bit of three quarter 19 for now. But it'll give you the idea, that'll make the post in the corner. It'll be cut to match the other panels here. And the side panel will be made up of these boards with the lap joint on them so they've got a recess on the top and a lap on the bottom so I think originally it was designed to make it shed water but that'll go in on the edge here and the piece that goes in here will come up against these and what I'll do is I'll have an outer structure for these bits of wood to fit into which will come inside the outside skin it'll run through there and we will secretly screw the ends of these boards into that structure down the edge there and then when we put the lining piece in the back pillar it'll go in afterwards we should be able to slide it straight down the boards and tuck it in there that'll hide the screws and it'll look like the original because the original had all the screws in from behind and what I'll do is I'll put a few screws in from the side it has a few screws coming in through the top and that'll hold that piece in place and then we'll also have the metal strip which will fit down the inside and that can screw that in there as well. So hopefully it's all going to work and look a little bit like a 34 Ford Ute when it's done.
done. I'm just getting ready to weld together our left hand panel with this little area here where I've got this little curved recess in it and that is to fit the little recess panel for the tailgate into. So as with the right hand side one we've got to get these two to fit together perfectly. Now the best way to do that is to actually weld it together inside the piece it's going to go into. So what I'm going to do is I've got it all set up and I've got a little filler piece cut here to weld into the top of it and I'm just going to tack it from the back to hold it in the right shape and then I'll take it apart and weld it from the top side and grind that up to fit in there. But by doing it this way we're going to ensure that it's going to be a perfect fit. I've got these back corners made now and this will form the inner structure for the back corners of the ute body and the next job from here is to mount them on the back of the car and get all the alignment right. We don't want them leaning out or in or have a twist in them and things like that and then once that's done I will form the outside skin that goes over the top of it. We'll get all dimensions correct on that. Fit it into here and then we've got to make this outside lip that's going to project straight out from here off this edge and it's also got to have the curve this way to match the outside of the body. So that's going to be a bit interesting. Well that's got our two corners in place. Everything measures up right. We've got the right width across the top of these rails which is 57 and a half inches. So the sides of the ute body parallel all the way up to where they start curling onto the door pillars. And my tailgate opening is square. So happy Rob. The next job will be making the outside skins to go over here. Now because I've spread the body a little bit they need to be a little bit wider at the top and they come back to that same measurement at the bottom. So that's just going to give us that really nice plump 1934 Ford look to the back of the car and it's going to be great.
Now I've got these two panels made and it's the inside support for the back corners of the cab. <laughs> now I've got... <laughs> if my camera lady shuts up and stops cacking herself, we might be able to actually make s movies here. <laughs> that one's a keeper. <laughs> G'day, eh? <laughs> God, you couldn't read about it, would you?